What is up guys? Sensei here. Now, there are times, there are certain games that you either play or you see that redefine the way you look at Go and redefine the way how Go works. This is one of those games for me. I didn't play it. I, this was somebody else's game and that person who wishes to remain nameless, we'll call him person X, uh, played this game in a tournament, a live tournament. This game was one of the coolest games I've seen. It was a low SDK level, also just to give some rank uh, analysis. Um, this was like 2Q to, I think 3 to 1Q-ish uh, rank. And there is so many main amazing ideas to learn from this game um, that I just I had to make a video of it and show it to you guys. Uh, he was talking to me about the importance of counting when he brought this game up. And everyone says to count, I tell people to count. Still don't do it that much. Um, but I'm trying to get better at it because of this game. Um, this guy, person X, went from having no points by the middle game, late middle game, to winning by eight and a half-ish. So he said that was all because he counted. And he knew that if he funneled his opponent in this certain way, he would have enough points to win. And I guess his opponent, overconfident from the territorial lead they had, uh, didn't take it as seriously as they needed to. Uh, so this is an amazing game. It has a lot of really great basic ideas that we all need to learn and master. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, alright, alright. So the game starts off easily enough. So we're going to show max influence versus max territory for both players. You're going to see how this develops. So white decides to, instead of taking the corner, get a little more complicated, a little more frisky, and uh, approach a 3-4. Black is like, I don't care. Um, my 3-4 can survive two hits, so I'm just going to take another corner. White hammers in. Uh, black plays here. Interesting that white didn't uh, just defend here, but to be fair, uh, white's aiming for a little more rapid development because they're already it's already a corner behind, right? So tries to go this way. Black just backs off. Uh, white makes and two space extension. I'm not going to get involved with sort of what I think should be played, or you know the intricacies of the opening. I just want you to get a general flow of this because the real magic will happen in the late middle game. So we see black approach, not worry about attacking this right now. So, all right, white pincers, black dives in, variation everyone knows. We see white starting to mix the territory here and here, so that's good. Uh, black aggressively attacks and tries to work the algae of the stone. Uh, white ignores, black comes up, we see some territory sealing off. Interesting move. So black decides to stop white from cutting off his corner from the rest of the board. Um, white flows out, probably aiming to invade here somewhere later. Black, so we can see how territorial black is playing, right? Black is a like unbelievably territorial. He's not really looking to attack anything he's kind of just looking to grab all the low points he can. And that sort of is setting a red flag off in my brain, being like, this isn't a very balanced game for black. It doesn't feel balanced, right? I like white better in this game right now um, more than black, even though black definitely has more cash that's in the bank than white does. So we see white uh, start to invade, then stop, and actually just force black to capture in exchange for a wall. So we see black seal off the corner, which is totally territorial. Uh, white starts to influence it up, keep black low from developing. Here is the point, right? Let's look at the board right now. Somehow, black has like three corners, three and a half, two and a half corners. Black is way ahead in territory right now. Let's do a quick count. So. I'm just going to do it, you know, one at a time. 
So one, two, three, uh, four, five, six. Let's pretend black gets something around here, right? So black's got 61 points right now, can still invade here. White has like, maybe this much, depending on what black wants to do here, 16. So he counted and he's like, uh, I'm going to need to make 50 points right now. So he wasn't feeling good about this game. But black makes a crucial, crucial mistake, which is the second point I want to bring up in this game. So the first point was we see that black is very low, pressed down very low, and he's just working his territorial advantage. Even though he's really ahead in territory right now, go sort of lends itself to better to balance play. Um, if you take too much of one style, too much territory, too much influence, odds are you're neglecting something. And if your opponent can take advantage of that neglect, oftentimes it can backfire. So that's something to keep in mind. This is the next move. I'm sure this has happened to you countless times, right? You're building up this really big area and black just, or not, does not be black, but anybody just like sticks a stone in the middle and just looks at you and be like, what you gonna do about it, buddy? And you're just sitting there in your head being like, I made, the... I hope you get a rock in your shoe every day for the next year. Like you're just, you're just hating this move, right? However, this is sort of violating one of the primary rules of high level reduction and high level invasion is in general, you do not want to simply plop a stone in the middle of an area that you want to reduce and just give your opponent the opportunity to decide how, what he wants to do with it. What I mean is you want to aim at something, right? That when you always see players, oh, they're aiming at this point, they're aiming at that point. You want to invade in a dynamic way that is threatening something else. Because if you're threatening something else while reducing, they can't respond in the way that is best for them because you're also making two threats with your move. This one threatens zero things. It's not, it's not threatening anything. White is completely freedom at freedom to choose how he wants to push black around. White decided that it is the most profitable, and if he shoulder hit here, here, expected black to respond and could wall this section of air of territory off and maybe get some of here, he would have enough to make the game close. So that's what he did. Uh, shoulder hit here. Black is just passively making a shape. Like we see, he's not aiming at anything. He's not attacking anything. As a result, his shape is just a little, little dumpling thing. Doesn't die, but doesn't actually matter. White starts to go to work sealing off this side while dynamically, you know, attacking. And we see standard endgame follow. Now white's developing over here. Uh, just for reference, this I think is bigger because this can be invaded multiple ways anyway. And black got a lot of profit here. But be that as it may, uh, if we're just going to finish up the game here and just them making reducing moves, right? Black even got this reduction in. We're just gonna go down, see him start to sanction this off, this off, this off. So all of that influence decided to pay off and culminate into kind of an amazing center. And after everything is said and done, uh, I'm just gonna go to the end. After everything is said and done, if you check out the score estimator, white wins by seven and a half. White was able to go from having literally almost no territory to winning by seven and a half because of two reasons. One, white had a lot of power on the outside of the board that black neglected to try to limit in the beginning stages of the game. If we just look at some ways black could have started. Uh, this is fine, this is fine. This can be argued as probably fine. This one, 
it's low. It's developing maybe four points. It might make more sense if black wants to play in this direction to shoulder hit up here. Kind of force white, get your nose in, right? In just like a really simple flowy kind of way. Start developing points up. Uh, that will also stop white from developing out. That's one way it could have prevented it. This move is also a little bit slow. I would have maybe started maybe the shoulder hit. Maybe black can come out, come up this way. Um, something to try to stop this from turning into an uninvadable thing, right? So there are multiple opportunities for black to do something. Um, and this was the third mistake. Just putting a stone in being like, it's in the middle, it's not threatening anything, you have the total freedom to do whatever you want. And you know, sometimes that works if the score difference is close enough. Um, maybe if you have friends you can just immediately run back to and you just need to make this reduction. But a lot of times if you're not aiming at something, it's subpar. Uh, maybe a better idea, you know, could be Maybe shoulder hit this first, force white to try to think about connecting, you know, what'll happen if I don't. Now he's like threatening this, maybe something along those lines. Then black can maybe come out this way. If white still insists on protecting the points here, black can start to grow a very large bottom for himself and white's sort of territory is hampered in. Um, these are just random ideas. Another thing might be to just try to live here directly. Maybe this seems a little too deep. This looks a little bit too deep. Um, but maybe threaten to maybe bust this stone out by you know making some attachments. Now white's got a lot of cutting points. If white decides to fill, black can play here. So threaten to maybe bust that stone out, but like you can see how black can dynamically create points while also limiting whites. Aiming for something when you invade or aiming for something when you reduce, combined with trying to balance influence and territory, can really help you figure out when a position is good and when a position is not good. That helps in positional judgment. Um, something we all have to work on, right? Uh, it also shows just how many points there are on the go board, right? Like, a lot of people freak out if their opponent has a slight territorial lead. Um, I was behind by 20 points after the opening, but that's my style. I like building up thickness that is realized late game, as opposed to getting quick cash and having to try to reduce my opponent all the time in the end game. Uh, that's sort of just me. But... There's a lot of really easy ways to make up those points. If you think about everything black had, and really not much that was defined for white. Um, how a simple wall, right, drawing a square and saying, is this enough points, um, was able to make all the difference in the world. And we see black wasn't counting. If black was counting, black wouldn't be so passively just making dumpling shapes and going along with whatever white's plan was. Um, black would have been much more active in trying to take away white's points. Um, I mean, even a move like this, right? Is this the biggest move? That that looked a lot bigger, right? If uh, black were to get this move, white could still fight it, but black could end up breaking into white's territory. And if white wants to keep this, Black might be able to make a few more points this way. Maybe something as simple as this. If white still wants to, are you sure white? Are you sure you want to keep all of these points? If you, if you are sure, that's fine. I'm just gonna take these, right? And then just like that, I got like five, six more points almost. Um, so we can see black wasn't counting and white had to, otherwise white would lose. So, and this was a tournament game which means they were both, this wasn't just an internet clicky sort of game where no one actually gave a crap about the game because you're on the internet, right? It was an actual like serious game 
So really cool stuff. I hope this sort of opened your eyes to how quickly a game can turn around and how many points, how much of the board can still be claimed even after you're behind by 40. Um, so this was really cool. Uh, I hope you also found this really cool. Uh, let me know in the comments if you like this, thought this was helpful. Uh, if you've gotten in any out of any tough situations that were similar to this, I uh, would love to know. So awesome. Uh, good luck in your games. And I hope to see you on the grid.